Welcome back to Bargaining 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on why knowledge is power. I am continuing the discussion here of uncertainty, which is the subject of Chapter 7 of Game Theory 101 Bargaining. You can check the video description for more information on that. And remember, we've been using the same model to illustrate many different important points about what uncertainty does to a bargaining environment. So again, this is a situation where Albert is uncertain of whether Barbara has a strong or a weak outside option. With probability P, she has the weak outside option, and with probability 1 minus P, she has the strong outside option. And just as a quick reminder here, we use that dashed line that stretches between the two Alberts to represent the fact that Albert isn't actually sure whether Barbara is weak or strong when he makes the offer. But we already know what Albert will do in this situation. When P is less than two-thirds, in other words, when Barbara is sufficiently likely to be the strong type, Albert tailors his offer to that strong type. He makes a high offer and makes sure that he gets a deal done. In contrast, when P is greater than two-thirds, Albert sufficiently believes that Barbara is the weak type, and so he's willing to make a gamble to give a low offer that only the weak type is willing to accept, and the strong type is going to reject. Now, what we haven't really analyzed yet is whether this harms Albert or not. So we can think about this as a situation where Albert has uncertainty and compare it to a situation where Albert no longer has that uncertainty and see what is actually better for Albert. And specifically, we can do this by comparing the previous game to this game. Now, this game is identical to the game that we analyzed before, except we do not have that dashed line that ranges between the two Alberts. So this is a situation that's representing the fact that nature is still drawing whether Barbara is weak or strong, but Albert now has that information. He's no longer lacking that information. He knows exactly what's going on. And so we can figure out what's going to happen here, calculate his payoff here, and compare it to his payoff for the situation before where he faced that uncertainty. Well, actually solving for his payoff here is very trivial because in each of these situations, Albert is just playing a standard ultimatum game with Barbara having a different outside option in left versus right. So with probability P, Albert is facing Barbara as the weak type. He's going to offer her 0.25, Barbara will accept, and Albert will keep the remainder, which is equal to 0.75. And with probability 1 minus P, Albert knows that he's facing that strong type, so he offers Barbara one half and keeps one half for himself. So we can compare the utility here to the utility for Albert in the previous game. And there are actually two different cases that we need to consider, because in the previous game, Albert's optimal strategy depended upon P. It doesn't in this case, because in each situation, Albert knows exactly where he is. But in the case with uncertainty, for example, when P is less than two-thirds, we know that Albert is making the safe offer here. So with incomplete information, Albert is under the impression that Barbara is sufficiently likely to be the strong type, so he makes the safe offer of giving Barbara one half, and both the strong type and weak type of Barbara accept that offer. And so Albert, with certainty, receives a payoff of one half. And it's regardless of whether Barbara is the weak or strong type, because both of those types are going to accept. Now, in contrast, with complete information, with probability P, Albert knows that he's facing the weak type, and so he can offer an amount of 0.25 to Barbara and get Barbara to accept, which leaves him with a payoff of 0.75, as you see on your screen there. And then with remaining probability, 1 minus P, he knows he's facing the strong type, and so he makes the amount, or rather he makes the offer that the strong type will accept, which is equal to 1 half, and keeps the 1 half remaining for himself, which is again that 1 half you see on your screen. Well, if we compare his payoff under complete information to his payoff under incomplete information, we can see that there's a price of uncertainty. So essentially, all I'm doing here to calculate what we see on the third bullet point is take the value in the second bullet point and subtract it from the value in the first bullet point. And if you do that, you get an amount equal to 0.25 times P. That is the amount that Albert loses by virtue of having incomplete information. He loses out on 0.25 P because he doesn't know Know what's going on. So this is actually quantifying how knowledge is power. Knowledge is power here by virtue of the fact that he's losing out on 0.25p. So by virtue, again, of the fact that he doesn't know what's going on, his lack of knowledge is costing him 0.25p. And we can do the same exact calculation 
when P is greater than two thirds. So this is a situation where Albert sufficiently believes that Barbara is the weak type and so he's willing to make the aggressive offer, which sometimes will be rejected, uh, specifically when Barbara is actually the strong type. So with incomplete information, with probability P, Barbara is actually the weak type, and so Albert makes that offer of 0.25 to both types here, and in this situation it's going to be accepted, so he receives the remainder of 0.75, so that's good for him. But with remaining probability, with probability 1 minus P, Albert is still making this offer of 0.25 because he can't differentiate between the two. The strong type is the realized type in this case, and that strong type rejects, giving Albert a payoff of of zero. And we can compare that to the situation with complete information, which is identical to before. So in this case, Albert is still getting p times 0.75 plus 1 minus p times 0.5. And if you take that second line and subtract the first line, that will give us the third line there, which is 0.5 minus 0.5p. And remember that p is an amount between 0 and 1, so this price of uncertainty is always going to be positive. In other words, it's always going to be costly for Albert to not know what's going on. And again, we can quantify the fact that knowledge is power here by virtue of us seeing that with complete information, Albert is going to be doing better by an amount of 0.5 minus 0.5p than he would be doing with incomplete information. So that's great. We have now quantified the fact that knowledge is power and Albert is paying a price for not knowing what's going on. But where is this price going, right? Albert is paying a cost to not have certainty. Where is that cost going? Well, previously, we've looked at how these games with incomplete information can result in bargaining failure. And when it results in bargaining failure, that cost is essentially going nowhere. There's inefficiency. No one is benefiting from the fact that Albert is making an offer that is sometimes rejected. So some of the time, this price of uncertainty, this cost of not knowing what's going on, doesn't actually benefit anyone. But sometimes it does. So with complete information, remember that Barbara receives a payoff of 0.25. This is because Albert correctly identifies that her outside option is equal to 0.25. He offers her that amount and she accepts. But Barbara, as a weak type, doesn't always receive 0.25 in the game with incomplete information. With incomplete information and P less than two-thirds, Albert is tailoring his offer to that strong type. And so the Barbara that's weak is still receiving an offer that is geared toward the strong type, so she's actually receiving a payoff of one half here. And that means in this situation, with incomplete information, the weak type of Barbara is doing better than in the world where there was complete information. So sometimes there's deadweight loss, sometimes there's this inefficiency that benefits no one, and so the cost of uncertainty, the, the, the power of knowledge, is benefiting no one in that case, or the lack of knowledge is benefiting no one in that case. Uh, but in this case, there is a situation where the weak type actually benefits. So the takeaway from this lecture here on knowledge is power is, well, one, knowledge is power. You're going to be doing better in the situation where you know the other side's outside option than when you don't, and we can quantify that very specifically as we did a few slides ago. And uncertainty can help weak types. It can help the weak types by allowing them to pretend to be strong types and get the amount that a strong type would receive through a bargained resolution. So that wraps up this lecture. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time when we continue analyzing these games of uncertainty. Join me then.